Hello, my amazing math minds, and welcome to this week's Math Tip Monday. My name is Heidi Rethmeyer, staff developer at ESU8. And this week, we will continue our conversation on the article by Dr. Karen Karp of 13 Rules That Expire, again, to help promote strong conceptual understanding with our students and make sure that uh, what we're saying or encouraging our students to, to do does not lead to some misunderstanding later. So here uh, are really two topics I'm gonna combine, combine today. Uh, one of them is when we say, line up the numbers to the right when we're dealing with addition and subtraction of whole numbers. And then oftentimes the terms that we use again in addition and subtraction of borrowing and carrying. So we'll, we'll take a look at um, what issues we might run into and some different terminology we can use to help our students because unfortunately um, the line the numbers up to the right that particular concept will expire in grade five which is when we start dealing uh, with computations uh, with decimals. So I'm going to go to the iPad and we'll look at some examples. Okay so let's start with the example of 245 plus 32. So you might get some students that do this and then we might be tempted to say, no, we need to line them up to the right so that it looks more like this. Well, um, yes, that will work when we're dealing with whole numbers, but we want to run into problems then if we have something like this. Because now when I try to line them up to the right, Clearly, we're going to have problems. So instead of saying line it up to the right, what's more appropriate to say is to line up like values. This will help students again reinforce the idea of place value so you can have uh, better conversations about place values. Um, and then it will become even more valuable when we start talking about subtraction. So let's take the example of 245 minus 87. And first I can have a conversation that I'm lining up like values. So I have my ones on the same place and my tens in the same place. And this is obviously an example where traditionally we would say that we need to borrow. So let's go ahead and write this in expanded form. Again, I am lining up my like values, my ones and my tens. Now, instead of saying borrowing, you know, we're not really taking from something and then giving it back. We are, are regrouping um, some of our different place values. For example, I'm gonna regroup this 40 into a 30 and a 10 Okay, and then this is gonna become 30 and this is gonna become 15. So I regrouped my tens. So I can then subtract my 15 minus seven. Again, I'm gonna to have to regroup another time where I'm gonna regroup my one, my 200 so that I give 100 to the tens and maintain the 100 in the hundreds place. So using the terminology of regrouping will really help to reinforce the idea of place value concepts for our students. And you can do something very similar when you're dealing with decimals. If we, we could do the same thing and write it in expanded notation and do some regrouping. So that was a real quick example of the trouble we may encounter if we use the phrase lining up the numbers to the right. Uh, we want to be consistent in our language so that whatever rule we might be talking about will apply throughout their K-12 mathematical career and not just expire. And also the precise vocabulary in terms of using a regrouping instead of borrowing, again, will help students have a better uh, understanding of the concept of place value uh, in our numbers. So I hope those examples help you reflect on some of the terminology you use in your math classroom. And until next time, stay well, be kind.